we are back video number eight so we're going to touch up on some stuff from uh tony robbins life force book and some other things uh related to what we can only call as forced recovery so for someone like myself who's traveling a lot this year especially every single month i'm somewhere abroad big flights seven 16 hours i'm not a lot of movement not not a lot of sun exposures there, not a lot of fresh food and all those kind of things. And obviously it takes takes a hit on your health. So and at the same time, there isn't much time to recover from it because it's so intense, all the learning, all the processes that I'm I'm going through and, and then training on top of all that. You kind of want it to be as optimal as, as possible, but it's hard to maintain that. So there will be some kind of strategies involved that uh, you use to kind of pull yourself up into a sense of recovering quickly. And at the same time, understanding that at some point you will have to have a break. <laughs> so this is more about like a damage control. Uh, and uh, probably going to start with how would you uh, line recovery out when you know that you're traveling a lot you're doing your training you're you're heavily involved in business you're heavily involved in maintaining human relationships all of that causes a lot of stress and every single one of those demands some kind of recovery to be able for you to function well and, and not burn out so what would be your suggestion for example to start these kind of things Let's say after the travel, let's 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 begin with that. You come back home after the longer travel, maybe it's four days, maybe it's 14 days, but more more likely than not, you are a bit of a jet lagged. So yeah. what, what yeah. would be the thought process behind, hey, so, I need to recover so I can go hit the gym, I can go and do my business, I can still spend time with my boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the hell there is, and be fully present instead of just brain dead. So very first thing I would say is you'd want to at least line out probably a whole day to dedicate to this. Now it can be with other people. In fact, I would encourage it to be with other people um, as far as like being able to um, be present with everybody else and stuff like that. Mm, did, I, did I lose you? No, 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 I'm here. Oh, okay. Uh, your, your, your screen just froze. Um, but anyway, so what I would start is I would start with starting the day off with no, uh, now this may or may not be possible, but I would plan it that way. Hey, you're going to have a day where you're going to dedicate yourself to giving yourself as much recovery as possible. And the first thing I would do is you'd want to wake up with the sun. You wouldn't want to sleep in. So the, 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 the worst thing to do would be like, Oh, I'm just going to sleep all day. That's probably not the best idea. You're, you're going to want to wake up with the sun and you're going to want to spend somehow you're going to want to arrange a day where you spend as much time outside as possible uh, so that you can get as much sunlight as possible. Because it's think of it this way. We've evolved with sunlight and everything that we do in the modern world, traveling, cell phones, in front of computers, everything we're doing right now uh, is sending signals, light wave signals to our whole biology that is not normal right it's it's a stressor so things that will counteract that is anything that has to do with nature i know it sounds kind of like you know hippie and all that type of stuff but it really really makes a huge difference so the first thing i would do is you wake up with the sun you don't look at your phone you don't look at your computers you don't look at any of that stuff if you have access to being able to uh go to uh, a hyperbolic chamber so some something where you oxygenate yourself better you can do that with a hyperbolic chamber you could also do that with red light therapy uh and sunlight so these two the hyperbolic chamber and the red light therapy augment natural sunlight exposure so you would not bypass it you would be so like, touch up mm -hmm. on on those two infrared it's mm -hmm. probably something that doesn't require a lot of space and you you can you can easily access it uh, yeah, yeah. So I did. hyperbolic yeah. oxygen uh, therapy is is a bit trickier. Yeah, you kind of have to find a place for that because it's like a tanning bed. It's really big. You have to sit in it. Now they make also red red light therapy beds that are that big. But you wouldn't like to get the benefit from it. You would just need something as small as as what I have here. 
Um, yeah. So this is about the size of my uh, chest. Uh, and that works pretty good for like general. So that, that means it's not small. Yeah, <laughs> that, that small right here. Yeah, <laughs> but you can get these. So these are very affordable. You can get much bigger ones the size of your body, but they just can hang on a door or on a wall mm -hmm. and you can just stand in front of it. Um, so how long uh, and when? Uh, I would do it in the morning first thing, probably because most people that are really like, uh, you know, business people and all that, you're going to wake up, right? You're going to wake up before the sun comes up anyway. The so main, re main reason I mention it because living in the UK, when sun comes up, it's still very dark mm -hmm. and most likely it's going to rain. <laughs> there are a lot of people will be like, I'm not going out. Right, right. So that's where you would augment. So you'd still want to go outside or at least go into an open patio where you can get direct, uh, you know, outside light, uh, but you would augment it with this. So in other words, uh, before the sun comes up, you could start this therapy for about 10, 20 minutes, and then you could have it on in the background if you're sitting on a covered porch or a balcony or something like that uh, and still getting natural light. Another trick that you could do in, in areas like this is if you happen to have a window that you can open open to get daylight, then you could get both, right? You could have daylight and you could have red light therapy at the same time. And, and, and think of it like almost like active meditation. You're not really like trying to close off your mind. You're just trying to relax and you will get more relaxed just by having red light on. So if I turned off all these lights and turned on just my red light box, it would be like having a fire. Like that's how you would feel uh, almost like in your brain, you, you would feel more relaxed that already starts to change some processes in your body uh, for recovery, right? Because your body has adapted over millions of years that firelight means nighttime, okay? And red infrared light from the sun means activity and recovery and that sort of stuff. So there are certain processes in your body that get kicked off with certain light waves. Um, some of them you can see like the actual red, but others like the, this box gives off red light and infrared. You can't see infrared, but it penetrates your body and it activates mechanisms in the mitochondria that facilitate uh, the electron transport chain getting shorter, which means now your energy system is more efficient temporarily because what it'll do is um, it heats up the intracellular water. And a lot of people don't know this. Uh, I mean, they know if you freeze water, it expands. Everybody knows that. If you put something in the fridge that's water, it's going to expand. The opposite is true, too, with water. If you heat water, it shrinks. So if you heat uh, with infrared light from sunlight or a red light therapy box, the water in a mitochondria, it shrinks the electron transport chain and makes everything more efficient there. So that's like a, a go-to that you would start the day with. At the same time, you would take your uh, some supplements like uh, a little bit of L-carnitine, selenium, and some B vitamins, uh, uh, especially thiamine, uh, which is B1, because it's one of the starting molecules for the electron chain uh, transport. So you could do this through food, and I would suggest that too. Seafood contains quite a bit of thiamine. Uh, it's also going to contain selenium, and it's also going to have plenty of omega-3 fatty acids in there. So I think I mentioned that in the previous episode, burning fat or utilizing uh, fat, whether it's body fat or consumed fat, uh, will make more water at the cellular level inside your cells. So you're making more water, you're heating more water, all of that contributes to a more efficient energy system for this day, setting you up for the day. Uh, the L-carnitine is gonna make uh, the fat transportation into the cells that I just mentioned more efficient because it's the carrier shuttle for bringing fatty acids from outside the cell, inside the cell. Uh, you could add some choline in there um, and that's going to be a methyl donor for the oxidation process. So once the fat gets into the cell to before it starts getting broken down and made into energy and water, one of the contributors there is the methylation process. Choline is going to add to that uh, and augment that. So a combination of selenium, carnitine, and choline are going to and, and B vitamins, whether you get that through food or a supplement, um, is going to be super crucial for the nutrition that morning. Uh, then, so would you get up 
uh, get your supplements in, then do your uh, red light therapy. Another thing is when you stand in the dressing gown or <laughs> when you strip yourself up. Um, I would try, yeah. I um, so if you could, the more skin exposure, the better, because your skin is a is is an organ. Okay, your skin is made to receive signals from the outside world, and if you're going through all this effort to put certain light waves on you, specifically sunlight, red light, and all of that, you would want to get the most benefit. And I would, I I actively do that. So my neighbors probably think I'm super crazy because. I, I'll, I'll, I'm the guy that's out in my underwear in, in the middle of winter on my porch uh, in the mornings. But th that's re that's the reason why um, is I want as much skin involved in this type of therapy. So same thing if you say, for example, you went to a uh, hyperbolic chamber with some red light therapy in it, you would want to do it like you would do a tanning bed with as much skin as exposed as possible. Um, because the more of it you get involved, the more of the right signals you're going to get set to the rest of your body. Um, and this type of thing, like just from what I just mentioned right now, except for the supplements, this can be done daily. So you could even, so say you're, you do have time in the morning to kind of have a little routine for 30 or 40 minutes to do this. You could do this daily to build up your resilience to what's going to happen the rest of the day. So you don't necessarily need to run yourself down before you start doing this. No, you don't. Now the supplements, right? The, the L-carnitine, uh, B vitamins, uh, choline and all of that, those will be better. Uh, they will work better if they are more sporadic. So maybe like towards the end of each week or something like that. But the actual therapy, light therapy, sunlight therapy and all that type of stuff, you could do that daily. In fact, I would encourage it because then you're not having to pull yourself out of such a deep hole at the end of every week. Yeah. And so how about uh, oxygen, oxygen therapy? So when would you in include that? Because obviously you need to find where it is and you need to allocate time yeah, for it. I would, I would probably put that, you know, maybe you, you have enough money that you have one in your own house. I know people like that, but if you don't and you have to find a place, then I would, I would place that with the regimen of a weekly or bi-weekly regimen to augment everything. So we just talked about a little bit about how light and water are going to help the efficiency of the chain, how well carnitine and choline are going to help uh, make sure that there isn't like uh, limiting factors in the process that's going to happen with fat oxidation. And the key word in there is fat oxidation. That means there's oxygen being used to do this. So the hyperbolic chamber will augment the amount of oxygen. So, so think of it like a, a car, right? You're augmenting the, the um, intake of the air to make more power, more energy, right? And so that's where I would have used the hyperbolic chamber once a week, added in with the L-carnitine and the choline and the selenium, because those are gonna augment the, the fuel input. So now you augment the oxygen input, and now you get a big augmenta augmentation at the, at the final product, which is um, you know energy. Because at the end of the day, recovery, what does that mean? Right. It means that you now are energized the, the think of it like a battery, right? You've drained it, you've drained it, you've drained it. And now you got to charge it back up. That's energy. You are literally trying to store more energy for future use. Your body can do that from food. Like that's why you can survive without food for, you know, quite a few days. You cannot survive without water because water is a crucial component in the actual mechanisms that create the energy and store the energy. Right. So that's that's why um, or that's that's what you got to have to have in your in the back of your mind of what does recovery mean? It means you're topping off the battery again. So it's an energy state. So when it comes to oxygen therapy, would you do it at the end of the week? Would you do it before travel? Would you do it after travel? Would you do it? Ideally, if, yeah, if you're traveling. If you're traveling like every week, like say you're traveling for four or five days in a row and you come home on the weekends, I have a client that does that, then yes, I would actually just place it every weekend because it's actually the beginning and the end, right? Yeah, so, so you come home and reset yourself and off you go. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's how I would do it. If it's like and would it be earlier in the day or later in the day? 
I would do it as early as possible. Same thing, same thing as the light therapy, because you're you're have those residual effects of augmented oxygen for the next, you know, six to eight hours. So if you start up early in the day, you're going to have an energy surplus. And the rest of the day, we haven't even got to the rest of the day. This is just the morning, right? So now the rest of the day, it's your job to almost like unload any kind of stress that you have. So that that means, you know, turning off your phone. That means going and hanging out with your friends or, you know, having them come. A relaxing day, whatever you want to call that. You know, it could be a spa day, whatever it is. What you want to do is not be mentally or physically engaged in too much other than what you need to do to continue to augment the recovery. You know, going to your sauna therapy or hyperbolic chamber therapy. Um, even getting a massage is super, super uh, beneficial in this instant. And I wouldn't make it like a, like a sports therapy massage. I would make it more of a, a relaxation massage um, because that also will contribute to uh, better energy production. Like uh, another thing you could use, whether it's, you know, some people prefer massage, some people prefer acupuncture, same, same concept. Both of those bring energy into the system through different modalities. One's through an actual um, semiconductor, the needle, that's what acupuncture is. The other one is through manual manipulation, the massage therapy. And what they're doing is they're actually augmenting how your mitochondria functions in your body uh, from the you know, electron transport chain. Um, and, and you don't really need to know any of that. You just need to know that it is modifying how you make energy and how you transport energy. So from all this, imagine somebody has been traveling for six months, let's say every month going somewhere for a week. At the end of six, six months, he's feeling, you know what, I'm really run down. I really need something like this. So mm -hmm. how would you set up one day incorporating all of this, where they have just said, you know what, I need one day just for myself. So where do, so you start with your infrared, you start with your mm -hmm. supplements, then you drive down to get uh, oxygen therapy. Would you mm -hmm. throw in a massage somewhere afterwards, or would you leave massage for a different day? No. So that's what I would do. So I would go, okay, so you've done all of that. Uh, you've taken some L-carnitine. And, and so a word on carnitine, it needs to be injectable in order to work correctly. Um, taking it orally doesn't work. Choline doesn't have to be injected, but it helps if it is because you're taking them at the same time. So you want them on board at the same time. Um, but you can take oral choline uh, and it will have some of the same effects. Um, but the carnitine has to be injected. Uh, another thing that I would add in there, if you have the availability, is glutathione. Because what you're going to do is, so everything that I just spoke about before the glutathione is all energy related. And glutathione is much more like antioxidant immune system related, right? So this one, the glutathione, you could take it or leave it as far as recovery goes. But you mentioned traveling probably abroad, probably all kinds of different countries, et cetera. So you probably want to support your immune system. So I would include the glutathione there. If you were just working from home, but you've just been, you know, up for 20 hour days, every single, you know, whatever for, for a 30 day straight, you might not need glutathione, although it wouldn't be detrimental, but you know, that's your call. So you would start with that in the morning. You would start with the therapy of hyperbolic chamber, red light therapy, sun exposure for the morning. I would do that before I would say 10 30 a.m. So wherever you're you you wake up at whatever your time you're gonna wake up and you want to have all these things done about before 10 10 30. After so can that, you touch up on glutathione a bit more because that's injectable or IV. Yeah so you they they have both therapies so so there are there um therapy clinics out there like hydration therapy clinics where you can go in and get IV fluids. They usually do include the ability to add glutathione to your bag and that would be an IV administration. That would be like top of the line type of thing. Like that's like the most effective way to get glutathione in you. But I would only do it at one of these places. I would not try to IV myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can purchase through pharmacies or through other supplement vendors um, online uh, injectable glutathione, uh, and that would be like the second, the next tier down from IV. And then there's an offshoot of liposomal glutathione, which is like an oral liquid. 
that works okay, but it's very, like you would have to take a lot of it. You would have to take like half the bottle to get nearly as much benefit as an injectable and it wouldn't even come close to an IV administration. Um, and so those would be the ways that, that you could get it. Um, the On this particular, for this particular person that's just been trying to run for six months straight and now needs ultimate recovery, I would suggest the IV administration because you're going to get a secondary benefit. You're going to get hyperhydration. And if they could add in NAC into that IV bag along with the glutathione and maybe a little bit of NAD and taurine into that, uh, you're going to find incredible benefits with hyperhydrating the cell plus robustly bringing up your immune system. Um, so would you add NAC, NAD, and taurine as your IV, or can you supplement with it in the form of pills? Um, you can supplement the NAC and the taurine in the form of pills. Um, but again, you're going to be taking quite a bit more. And at that time, you are banking on your body being able to process it um, intest like through your intestines and stuff like that. It does work for some people. It doesn't quite for others. Um, so again, for this person, I would say just have, if your, you know, IV administration place has the option, I would do all of those in the bag itself so that you are getting the best benefit as possible. Um, or you could order these all yourself and do them all as a, an injection yourself at, at your own home. Um, there is a, a website out there called DarylStrength.com that carries all of these as far as being able to um get them in in the injectable format yeah uh, I, I think it becomes more more kind of uh available all over the place as well mm -hmm. uh, and people are kind of more open to it because exposure to it is 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 quite big at the moment like yes. people are running themselves in the ground and they're like god damn it i don't want to sit down i don't want to do any of this how mm -hmm. do i keep going yeah. And so then the next step in that day would be now it's maybe around noon, right? And so the next thing that I would implement uh, around noon is I would again try to get outside or at that point in time, I would go with some blue light therapy. So just you could literally just go to a sauna like or not a sauna, sorry, to a uh, tanning bed. So a tanning salon. So those are all over the place. You could, you know, for the people in the UK that, hey, maybe it's just raining all damn day, right? <laughs> so if that's the case, then I would actually go middle of the day, some, somewhere between noon and 2 p.m., somewhere in there, I would try to get 10 to 15 minutes of ultraviolet light therapy. Uh, so you, just your regular tanning bed will work for that. Uh, or for free, you can go outside if it is sunny. Um, that is going to kick off the next phase in your biology. And at that time, I would probably just go ahead and enjoy whatever food. That would be like a perfect time to have like a an early dinner with your loved one or your girlfriend, you know, go somewhere nice. Uh, if you could eat it outside, that would be even better. Something that's going to really bring up your pleasure response to the food. That's what I would pick for that meal in the middle of the day, along with outside light or a tanning bed session. Um, and the reason for that is now you're trying to um, shift things from a physical perspective to more of a mental recovery perspective in this time of day. So the morning was all dedicated to um, physical energy and augmenting physical energy and how your body itself feels. And then the afternoon, uh, you'll start with pleasurable food, pleasurable company, some sunlight or tanning bed for more of a mental boost. Uh, and that would be a good time to, if you're somebody who is, you know, very muscular, that would be the time where you, I would probably implement a little bit, a little bit of insulin or something along those lines. If you're not uh, somebody that's, you know, familiar with that, something as simple as a glucose disposal agent, uh, something like berberine or metformin. Uh, metformin is very popular in anti-aging circles for that, but you, I would want to take it kind of in that time of day because that's probably the, uh, the time of day because of the food where you're going to have a lot of carbs, a lot of uh, fats, all, like it's going to be a, a very 
calorie dense meal. So I would actually offset any of the negatives or some of the negatives with a little bit of insulin support, whether that's exogenous insulin or through a pill or a supplement like berberine or metformin. So, so to help just control yeah. the blood sugar and, and yeah, you, yeah, help, help facilitate the blood sugar to go where we want it to go. So now you're, um, mentally feeling great and you've ate a bunch of food after you've kind of prepped your body for making a lot of energy so now you've fed it a lot of food and we want to store that energy right, right. we want yep. to put it all in the right places and that's where you're going to augment it with some of the things that i just said um, and then in the evening uh going into the evening the first thing that i would do ideal scenario is you can go somewhere in nature, like for maybe you have a backyard, right? I'm, I'm not really sure how the living circumstances in the UK are, but if you had a backyard, what I would do is I would actually do a fire. So like if you have a small fire pit, I would do a fire and I would actually try to eat my food around the fire light because fire light has some unique properties, kind of like the red light therapy. That would be kind of like a substitute a little bit where you would actually Think of like making your home like having a camping ground. You don't want overhead lighting. You want lower lighting like lamps. Lamps are great. Uh, what that does, and, and you probably even notice that if you have any lamps, if you shut off your overhead lighting and turn on your lamps, you can still see just fine, but you feel different. You feel more relaxed. You feel more sedentary. Just the shift from a high light to a low light changes how the light hits your eyeball and that changes the dynamics of what goes on at night from a hormonal release standpoint so what's going to happen if you do this whether it's red light or a fire light or any of that where you kind of shut off all overhead lights especially any leds uh, things of that nature um, and just make it red light dominant and dimmer and from below what that'll do is it will prepare your body to kick off all of the recovery hormones earlier than normal. Uh, so what you wouldn't want to do is turn on all of your lights and try to have a party, right? Like don't, don't invite all your friends over. Hey, I'm, I'm having a rest day. So all of you come over and hang out at my house. That would be the wrong thing. I'm, they could all still come over, but you wouldn't want it to be a party atmosphere. You would want it to be more, uh, ambient lighting type of atmosphere mm -hmm. and if you could shift it to red light uh, that would be even better uh, a little workaround on there would be blocking blue light with some blue light blocking glasses uh, that will accomplish the same thing uh, or very close to it right so now you don't have to worry so much about um, the color of the light that you're using if you don't have infrared and stuff like that but you would still want to lower all or turn off all the overhead lighting and use only lamps or cabinet lighting uh, even if you're using these so would, would there be any kind of supplements when you come into afternoon as well because we talked about morning you have your uh vitamins b selenium and all those kind of things and you have your iv drip in midday let's say just full day on recovery and then mm -hmm. what do you do in afternoon? What do you do in evening uh, and carry it on from there? Yeah. So in the evening, so once you kind of set the mood and you're going to be, and that one more thing with food in the evening, you would want to eat it as early as possible, right around when the sun is setting. Right. And then the rest of the afternoon, the evenings, even if you're going to be up for another two or three hours would be the whole lighting environment that I just talked about at that time, at that time, you could take a little bit of, ashwagandha or GABA, either one, it doesn't have to be both, but sometimes people kind of like that combination. So it can be both or, for example, I don't respond very well to ashwagandha, it doesn't really do anything, but GABA does. And so that's where uh, I would implement something like that. And if you're somebody who is bigger and muscular, I'm sure you're using other things too, this would be the time where you would implement T4. So that's a thyroid hormone. And the reason you would want to do that is because your body's already going to naturally make some T4 there um, in, the, in the evening if you've set up the lighting environment correctly. You're going to augment that. And what that's going to do is it's going to set you up for the next day. Remember, we're setting ourselves up 
to continue to work hard, right? So it's gonna set you up for the next day to have a lot of deodinase enzyme action, uh, which means that you're gonna turn more of that T4 into T3 the next morning. So you're gonna be more energized the next day and the next several days if you do it that way. So you would put your T4 in the evening with a little bit of GABA or ashwagandha at that time. If you're somebody who, you know, maybe you have a prescription from your TRT doctor or something like that, for a little bit of growth hormone replacement therapy. That's also where I would put it. Uh, I would put the T4 and the growth hormone or growth hormones secreted dogs like ipamorelin or things of that nature. I would put those all right at the end, right, right before bed. The ashwagandha, I would put it right after you get done eating. Um, so that, that would really be the supplementation that I would use in the evening. Now, if for some reason you're dealing with neurological problems or something like that, where it's like you're going to be up all night for whatever reason, because that's just how it's been, that's when I would implement something that I, you know, something a little more aggressive, something like some Selenc or um, even uh, SR9009, something like that. One of those two things, what they'll do, we spoke about them last time just a little bit, antioxidants for the brain specifically, going to start the relaxation process even earlier in the day. And so depending on your sleep, right, like your natural uh, ability to fall asleep and that stuff, you could supplement that with one of these two. Not everybody's going to need that. The ashwagandha is more of the catch-all for some of that. So most people will just get enough from that. But if you're somebody who really struggles to go to sleep, the Selenc and the, the uh, SR9009, I would start with the Selenc. Um, that would probably be where I would start for somebody. So when, when we pull slightly back everything you uh, we've kind of discussed. And so everything you get in the morning, you can buy over the counter. Then you get your IV drips and whatnot. You, you go to, to specialists who understand what they're doing and they got to give you everything that we just listed. Then in afternoon, evening, you start thinking about your T4s, HGH, Ipamorelin, maybe MK677, whatever. Those mm -hmm. probably are not as easily available unless you are in like some kind of Mexico or Greece or whatever. So how would you go about them? And is there something that is having, uh, you need to consider, is there any kind of, dangers around those things at all because people will think about oh thyroid whoa well this is going yeah, heavy yeah so yeah you wouldn't again so this is a very specific protocol for hey this day i'm trying to get as much recovery as possible so you don't do this every day you literally do it once a month yeah yeah once a month at the very most like twice a month yeah right now the therapies you know the iv drips the light uh, in the morning, in the evening, all of that, think of it like the basics. We're trying to replicate the basics that you're not doing because you've been traveling and yeah. working. You see what I mean? You've been missing the basics. So we're trying to replace them or augment them for this one day. So those, if you can start inserting them throughout the week, are going to be very beneficial so that at the end of the week or the end of every you know 14 days you're not digging yourself out of such a deep hole so those parts of this protocol yes if you can find a way to make them daily you're gonna you're gonna be very grateful for that um now as far as the supplements uh, especially the ones at night and the ones in the morning those are going to be more of like sporadic you know once a month twice a month type of thing and if you keep them like that you're I would, it would be hard for me to find something wrong with you as far as like blood work or health or anything. And if anything, you're probably going to be healthier if you do keep them sporadic like that, because you're going to find that metabolism stays like it should because you're not dysregulated all the time and that sort of, because that's what will end up happening if you don't do anything like this and try to get uh, your circadian rhythm and your biology back in rhythm. What starts happening is thyroid hormones start to get tanked, then those will cascade into cortisol problems and that sort of stuff, right? So that's what we're trying to prevent. And that's why we're adding some of these things sporadically to kind of reset the body. Yeah, just to kind of highlight that there is such thing as too much of a good thing. You yeah. know, like you can drink too much water and get a heart attack. 
because yeah, you yeah, absolutely yeah. PR to all the minerals. Uh, so taking all these every single day is not going to turn into making you a superhuman. More more likely than not, is going to run you into ground again. Yeah, because what you'll end up doing is you'll just do more of the shit that you're already doing that's incorrect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which a lot of people kind of like, oh, I'll just take more of the things and then I can go forever. Uh, sadly, it doesn't work like that. Our, our, our body is not meant for that. No, it's not. It's it's meant to, you're just like night and day, you're meant to be crazy and augmented and killing the world. And you're also meant to be able to go to sleep and relax and just chill. You, you have to learn to do both. So rounding all this up, uh, I think it's a great kind of breakdown of everything. Is there anything that specifically that you can do uh, or take just before going to bed, before you finish your recovery, forced recovery day, just to round it up and go and wake up next morning and feeling fresh? Uh, hydration would be a key thing just like in the morning you would start with as much hydration as possible you would end the day around the meal you know that dinner time with as much hydration as possible because you don't want to get up and pee and stuff like that so you would want to do it early right mm -hmm. um and then give yourself about two two and a half hours maybe three hours before going to bed of not drinking water but you've hyper hydrated that whole day so that's probably something that i didn't touch on enough for this whole protocol of the day is throughout this whole day if you normally drink three liters of water you're going to want to drink four or five liters of water you're almost going to want to double your water intake with with electrolytes because just like you said you don't want to pee out all the things that you're consuming so you would want to supplement it with uh electrolytes specifically sodium um somewhere around uh 5, milligrams of sodium for those four or five liters of water that you're going to be drinking throughout the throughout the day that and you combine the the light therapy don't skip on the light therapy in the evening changing the light environment in the evening is going to be extremely crucial to getting a very restful night nice sleep something that you can add to augment that getting very cold so literally stepping outside you can go to a cryotherapy place but you don't have to just step outside it will already be cold i don't care where you live on the planet it will be colder than you expect when you step outside especially if you step outside in your underwear <laughs> step out, step outside in your underwear for about 10 minutes you'll come back in you'll get in your bed you'll be nice and cozy and you will fall asleep much much faster than normal if the lighting was right and you got yourself really cold before going into bed no, awesome. I think uh, I'm rushing you through this as usual, uh, but we could make these videos probably in two, three, four, five hour long yeah. kind of episodes. Yeah. Uh, but this is just to highlight, hey, if you are somebody who is extremely busy, uh, you've got a physically taxing job, you, you're always traveling, you're mentally drained, those kind of things, and you don't want to stop, especially if it comes to end of the year where you want to kind of just be extremely productive. This kind of day, could give you the kick you really need instead of relying yourself onto energy drinks, caffeine, any kind of boosters or whatever the hell there is. Uh, and it probably would be much healthier doing that way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, th thanks for your time as usual. Uh, and next next time we probably can go deeper on this or uh, explore. There is so much more to explore. Uh, and, and add value in in sense of like, hey, these are the things that you can do immediately to change your life for better. Yep, absolutely. Cool. Thanks for your time as usual, and I'll speak Thank to you in the next video. You too. Bye. <laughs>